here we here we have problems 12 through 14 so the first word problem says a manufacturer of tv sets determines that their profits p of x depends on the number of tv sets x that they produce and sell at its given and is given by p of x equals this equation here where x is greater than or equal to zero find the number of tv sets the manufacturer should produce and sell to maximize the profit what is that maximum profit well if this is a quadratic we know that and it's a downward project quadratic it's going to look like this as far as the graph is concerned and we know that the maximum will occur at this little peak which is called the vertex and we have a formula for the vertex. If you want to figure out what the vertex is, you take the um, polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c, and you calculate what negative b over 2a is, and then your function evaluated at that value. <coughs> Excuse me. Since a y value is basically just an x value plugged into the function, and that's how you compute y values. Now, let's go ahead and figure that out. So for this problem, my b is going to be negative 145, and then my a is negative 0 0.25. And so then let's simplify that a little bit. Um, let me put my P here. So let's see what we get. Um, we get negative 145 over 2 times negative 0 0.25. We end up getting 2, 9 here. And then we still have to figure out what P of 290 is. So I'm going to plug in 290 into my function. And that should help me figure out that y value. So negative 0 0.25 times 290 squared 145 times 290 minus 1350. And we get 19675. Okay, but which is the answer to the first part of the question, right? And which is the answer to the second part of the equation? So for this problem, it says um, find the number of TV sets. Now remember, X is the number of TV sets. So it will be 290 TV sets that have to be produced to reach this maximum profit which means that the y value in dollars will be my maximum profit. And now you have answered both of those questions there. So number 13 says, in 2010, the population of Detroit was 713,000. By 2000, the population of Detroit was 689,000. Find and interpret the average rate of change. So average rate of change is just a fancy way of saying slope. So I've got to find the slope. Now we have a slope formula, but in order for me to use that, I have to have my information in um, points. So if I say in 2010, we have 713,000, right? And then you have 2013, and you have 689,000. So how do you um, put that in here? The second y-coordinate minus the first y-coordinate over the second value minus the first x-value. And so 689 minus 713 is negative 24,000, right? Over 3. Now I can reduce that 
and I actually end up getting, and this one's in years, right? This is the year. So these are years. And if I reduce this by three, I get negative 8,000 over one year. And I can rewrite that differently. I can write negative 8,000 per year. And so it says, find the um, rate of change. The rate of change is negative 8,000, right? And then interpret it. So what that means is that the population decreases because it's negative. If it were positive, the population would be increasing. It decreases by 8,000 people per year. And that's the interpretation. So you have the numerical value for the rate of change, but then you also have to put that in, interpret that number. Now, number 14 says, form a polynomial of degree three with the given zeros. Write answer in the form, in a general polynomial form. And so in order for it to have a degree three, I need to have three zeros. And they did explicitly give me all three zeros. So I know what the function looks like in its factored form. It's x minus negative four, x minus three, and x minus two. I can clean up those double signs and say x plus four, x minus three, and x minus two. Now it's just a matter of multiplying all these out to get the expanded form of the polynomial. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply these two together and I get x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12. And I'll simplify that a little bit before I go and I multiply positive x, the x minus two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I get x cubed minus 2x squared plus x squared minus 2x minus 12x and plus 24. So if I combine my like terms, I should have the final answer here. So I get x cubed. These guys together make a negative x squared. These guys make a negative 4x. And that gives me a positive 24. So then now I know that this is the expanded version of the function that they are looking for.